Red Dead Redemption 2. This game has some of the most rootinous, tootinous cowboys this side of the Mississippi. Today we are going to be talking about one of the most interesting missions in Red Dead Redemption 2. This mission takes you on a journey to track down four of the greatest gunslingers in the Wild West. Not only is this one of my favorite side missions, you also get some unique pistols that can be found nowhere else. Before we go any further, I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by July, and we're almost there. So if you like Red Dead Redemption 2 content, please subscribe down below so we can hit that mark by the summer. So let's get this thing started. The mission begins with a chance encounter with a rider named Theodore Levin who is in search of the greatest gunslingers of all time. Levin is seen interviewing Jim Boy Calloway about his gunslinging days at the Keen Salon in Valentine, but Calloway passes out from drinking way too much. Fastest left-handed draw that ever drew breath. He once killed 14 men in a fight at Luzi Hollow. What are you waiting for? How do you mean? Well, I reckon right now, kill him yourself. I don't want to kill him. I want to deify him. After his interview with Calloway yielded little to no detail, Levin asked Arthur to seek out four famous gunslingers who had past interactions with Calloway. Flacco Hernandez, Emmett Granger, Billy Midnight, and Black Bell. This all in order to gather information about Calloway and thus help him to write the biography. He gives the players pictures with their recent locations on them, along with the camera to take more recent pictures of them. Once you accept this mission, four locations will appear on your map. You can complete them in any order, but you won't be able to complete the actual mission until after Chapter 4. So let's get started with the first gunslinger on our list, Flacco Hernandez. Flacco Hernandez was an infamous outlaw and gunslinger who rode with a gang of 10 men. During his career, he launched many raids against Valentine, Strawberry, and Ansberg. His many criminal exploits led him to being wanted in eight states and earned him his own nickname, the Terror of the Grizzlies. By 1899, he was associated with the Del Lobo Gang. He can be located in a remote cabin to the north near a lake. The player approaches a modest camp with members of the Del Lobo Gang where he can either kill the gang members and assault the camp or convince them to allow them a meeting with Hernandez peacefully. The protagonist calls out to the Mexican gunslinger, asking them to spill details about Calloway. I didn't want trouble, but I'm just here to speak with you. About boy Calloway? Put your weapons away, and I'll come out. In response, Flacco comes out and says, Here's your message. Leading to a duel. He dives sideways in an attempt to make the player miss, but fails in a shot fatally. If the player disarms him, he will pull out a sawed-off shotgun, which cannot be disarmed. Come on, dude, don't shoot me. After taking out Flaco Hernandez, the protagonist may then proceed to take a picture of his corpse and loot his custom revolver. And it's a nice one. That's pretty cool. The second gunslinger is Emmett Granger. Emmett Granger is a retired gunslinger turned hog farmer. In 1882, he was reported to be seen during a massacre in Beaver Brook. In 1886, he was rumored to have been involved in the Laidlaw family disappearance. In 1890, he was suspect in the Chaparral killings. In 1894, he was a witness that led to the Fosse Gang arrest. The following year, he was given a federal pardon and acquired some land to become a hog farmer. Emmett Granger is located on a small farm south of the Horseshoe Overlook Camp. He can be found near his pig stables and will not attack when approached. What do you want? Howdy. You Granger? That's my name. Arthur mentions the book about Calloway, but Granger immediately becomes irritated that the book isn't about him instead. When Arthur asks for some stories, he promises to share some if he cleans the manure out of the pig stables. Don't mind me. You can talk while you work. <laughs> I ain't talking and shoveling. Besides, a young man like you would get it done in half the time. I don't know about that. What's to know? You interested in the old days? If you shovel this shit, I tell you some stories. After Arthur finishes the task, Granger refused to share more details, merely complaining that the book should be written about him. Okay, I cleaned up your mess. Go on, tell me about Calloway. I said I'd tell you stories. I didn't say they'd be about him. Don't trifle with me, old man. You knew him, just give me something, anything. You're making a book, you should make it about me. They're just words, is all. Give me something to say and I'll leave you alone. You owe me that. But with this, Arthur is amused. So he grabs a stick of dynamite and plants it in the manure shed before lighting it and therefore causing it to explode, showering both Granger and the entire property with pig manure. Granger becomes irate and a duel initiates. 
Granger will use throwing knives, so be careful with that. After shooting him dead, you could take a picture of his corpse and go pick up his custom revolver, the Granger revolver. Bro, this one's nice. I like the pattern on it. Next up is Billy Midnight. Billy Midnight was an infamous gunslinger roaming the Wild West. He became an overnight sensation after killing another gunslinger, Rabbit Matthews, which made Billy later become a national celebrity. He later did speaking tours and reenactments in St. Louis, San Francisco, and St. Denis, among other places. Due to his notoriety, he received several death threats and even assassination attempts. Billy was last seen near the Rhodes train station. As a result, the player approaches the clerk in the train station to ask about Billy's whereabouts, only to find out that Midnight will likely be found in one of the trains scheduled to stop in Valentine fairly soon. There's an old gunslinger I'm looking for. I heard he comes through here. Name of Midnight? Billy? Oh, that old soak? Yeah, he spends days on board these trains, but he's going nowhere but the gutter. The player boards the first train that arrives, and finds a drunken Midnight in a bar car. Driven irrational by his heavy drinking, and fearing that his past has finally caught up to him, Midnight panics and runs through the train in an attempt to escape. Hey! I didn't shoot him in his sleep! No one's I saying it! I didn't shoot him in his sleep, and if I did, it was the only way! No Come on now! Problem. I'm hearing about Jim Boy Calloway, and no one shot him yet. I knew you'd come for me! Get away from me! Jeez, what an overreaction. After reaching the front carriage, Midnight realizes he has nowhere left to run, so he challenges Arthur to a duel. Me. Come on now. Come on! Billy ends up dead in the end, either killed by Arthur or by his own hand. After taking a picture of his corpse, his weapon Midnight Pistol can be attained from his corpse. That's nice. Midnight's Pistol. The fourth gunslinger on our list is Black Bell. Following her first robbery in Rhodes, Black Bell became an infamous member of the Coulter Tobin gang, of which she is the sole surviving member. It is known that she was married six times to six different men, although she was never divorced to any of them. Her deeds eventually resulted in her becoming a renowned gunslinger. Black Bell resides in a hideout in Blue Water Marsh, north of St. Denis. She is still on the run and is holed up to prevent bounty hunters from killing her. When the player approaches the porch of the house, Bell asks if he's a bounty hunter. When he declines, she spots three bounty hunters coming from a distance and tell him, well, he must have led them here. Well then you done led them boys here and you none the wiser. Ah, those bounty hunters. Knew my luck had run out sooner or sooner. Well, get inside, I'll tell him you're gone. Oh. Belle promises to tell him a story if he follows her orders. So she tells him that the whole property is wired with explosives and to flip the switch when she gives the word. A large-scale gunfight ensues, with Belle and the player killing waves of bounty hunters, including some armed with a Gatling gun. After the fight dies down, Arthur asks her about Jim Boy Calloway, where Black Bell says he didn't do much of the fighting, and that his reputation is way overblown. Running with Jim Boy Calloway? Little Boy Calloway? <laughs> the only running he did was away from a fight, and that's about the end of it. Well, the man's apparently a famous gunslinger. Yeah, so they say, but uh, don't get what's famous confused with what's true. Arthur asks her for a picture, which she obliges, before getting on her horse and riding away. Boom. Okay, got it. And I guess I'll be on my way. Here. <laughs> well, thank you, Mrs. Bell. You gonna be all right? Oh, been running for 20 years. Suppose I'll be running till I drop. After all four gunslingers' pictures have been taken, it's time to find Theodore Levin again. But when you go back to the saloon in Strawberry, you realize they are no longer there. This is where you must have reached at least chapter 4. Arthur returns to the Valentine Saloon and the bartender tells the player that Calloway was last seen in St. Denis. After heading to St. Denis, look for a large ferry on the southeast side of the town. There you would tell Levin what transpired with interviewing the gunslingers. Well, uh, to be honest, things went a little differently. I did shoot a lot of people. I <laughs> thought that's sort of what you wanted. Well, I'd, uh, <clears throat> yes, that'll be fine. Do you think anyone noticed it was you? Noticed? I think the people I shot noticed. I mean, do you think anyone would mind if I, if we, said he'd done it? Levin wants to give Calloway the credit for defeating them as part of his book, but Calloway does not want this made-up glory. Instead, Calloway asks for the capture of Slim Grant, an old rival of his who killed his cousin. Levin wants to see a face-off between Calloway and Grant to prove that he is still a legend. Well, I always hated Slim Grant, or he killed my cousin. But that was years ago. Well, where's Slim Grant? Who's Slim Grant? This is him. 
An old friend of Mr. Calloway's. He ain't no friend of mine. So let's find Slim Grant. Slim Grant has become the state marshal operating out of Ansburg. The player interacts with the deputy who told them that Grant has been missing for a few days after he went out searching for outlaws. You. I'm looking for Slim Grant, state marshal. Heard you boys know where to find him. Oh, Mr. Marshall was here last week. I think he headed up to Beaver Hollow looking for some outlaws. Is he coming back? Sure, when he catches them fellers he's been after. How long's he been gone? Well, a couple of days. What, you ain't gonna go look for him? Arthur then locates him and must kill the outlaws who kidnapped him and then take the state marshal Grant to be confronted by Callaway. I need a favor, Mr. Grant. It's nothing big. I'll explain on the way. You... However, Grant refuses to fight Jimboy Calloway, resulting in an enraged Calloway losing his temper and shooting Grant in the back. Hey, you're an old man. Come on, fight me. It's a bit late, isn't it? God damn you! Oh. Shot him in the back. Calloway then becomes enraged again and challenges Arthur to a duel in order to reclaim his honor. Scumbag, <laughs> you and you, Plato! Come on! Draw! Why? I said draw, goddammit! No. Yes! He's about to get worked. Right in the legs. In the ensuing duel, Calloway is killed. Shocked. Levin says that he's glad that he no longer has to deal with Jim Boy Calloway, although he does bemoan that the last true gunslinger might have died. He, however, quickly figures out a way to make a good book out of it, by fabricating a story where Jim Calloway is made responsible for slaying all of the legendary gunslingers before dying at the hands of Slim Grant after mortally wounding him, only to be shot in the back by Grant. He did. Damn. In the back, after he mortally wounded Slim Grant. Fair and square. Yeah, that's it. Last of the gunslingers. Well, more or less, I guess. Levin then proceeds to leave the scene, at which point the player can pick up Calloway's revolver. After a few days, the player receives a letter and $350 from Theodore Levin, who says that his book about Calloway is selling very well, despite the fact that it is clearly a romanticized and fabricated story. Levin comments in reference to an earlier conversation with the player that Calloway can have the glory and he can have the freedom. Or the other way around. He is still unsure of which way it is. While the story might not be true, it's still a good story and that's all that matters in the end. This is by far one of my favorite missions in the game. Not only from the characters we get to meet, but from the weapons we get from them as well. If you enjoyed this video, like down below, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.